getting a buy, the first chance that there is a buy, it, 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 is it one of those things that with the way your team is right now health-wise that it's it's okay to have a buy this early? Yeah, I mean, I think you can always find an argument for the buy uh, whenever it is and an, an argument against it. I mean, you could find a million different things of whenever it is. And uh, this is when it falls, and certainly we'll use the time to you know, best to our advantage to try to get guys – back healthy, give some guys some rest that have played a lot of football for us, and you know, see if find ways to improve. Does getting that win before the bye, does that, I don't want to say minimize, but that does that put some of the areas for improvement in, in better perspective for you? Well, I think we're always going to be looking for, for ways to improve or things that you know, we can do to, to help our players, help our team, and you know, win, you know, whether that's taking care of the football or you know, protecting the quarterback or tackling. Um, X plays, a lot of, you know, everything that we potentially could work on, uh, you know, we'll try to focus on and, and see if we can, you know, get it done. You don't have a whole lot of time. It's, you know, we pick up a practice on Wednesday and, you know, we'll pick one up on Monday uh, coming back. But, you know, I mean, this isn't going to be a, a week that we're going to be able to scrimmage. With all the injuries that you guys have had, not only this year, but last year, and having to add parts here and mix people in and out. How important has it been that Ryan has been able to constantly answer the bell and be under center every game? Well, his toughness is certainly, um, you know, appreciative. You know, I appreciate it. I know the football team appreciates it. Um, you know, to be able to stand in there and, you know, get hit and try to, you know, work through his progression and, you know, take care of the football and all those different things. I think that the more times that the quarterback gets hit in this league, um, the more chance you have for error. So we have to we have to work on that. We have to improve that. Uh, but it's been great that he's been able to to exhibit that kind of toughness, um, you know, and make plays to help us win. What helps you get to the bottom of the X plays that you've given up? I mean, it just, you know, there's, there's only a few things that you can look at. Is it, uh, you know, a, a mental error or is it just a scheme beater or um, – you know, was it just a technique error or a physical error where a guy, you know, somebody got beat or the, you know, the, the quarterback had, had time or missed tackles, you know. So, you know, we do all that in a self-scout and, and go from there. You what you like see on, at this um, point, it's a, it's a mix of – They're always – it's always of uh, a collective of all those things. You feel like, like Caleb, is it physical at all, you know, in, in terms of the X plays and, and getting beat or, or is it more of a, you know, technique thing with him or uh, – just – you know, we have to clean up some of those things and not get not get beat and not not give up, uh, you know, plays over our head, you know, for for anybody involved. And uh, you know, we'll keep working on it. You just talked about confidence being built by repeated success. Yeah. You repeatedly have been able to win these games shorthanded. Uh, how much does that play into your team's, you know, confidence going in, knowing you're missing this guy, that guy, and the other? Well, guy? I think that they one. You know they they fight and they compete and I, and I and I love that about them. Um, they, they're not afraid to to play in a close game if it gets to that. You know we would rather it not. We've we've said that numerous times, but they they understand what the situation is, what it, what it requires. Um, you know whether that's offensively in a four minute drill or defensively to be able to execute uh, in the end of the game and. Uh, you know, I think this the guys that are in there each week. I, th I give uh, a lot of credit to the coaches to, to be able to, um, you know, get some guys ready that maybe haven't been with us for, for a long amount of time. You know, and then ultimately the, the credit goes to the players on the field that are doing it. What did you do so well on, on third down defense yesterday, and how, how big a key do you think that was? To well, it's a huge key to be able to, to affect the quarterback. Um, I thought we mixed some coverages. I thought, you know, it was a good mixture of, of man and zone and, um, you know, when we brought some pressure or when we dropped out of there, I thought that was a good mix. And then, you know, guys were, you know, trying to do their job to either affect the quarterback or, or be in the right spots uh, in coverage. You mentioned this this off season, what a priority red zone was. I was trying to remember the figure that you used for how much the game is played there, and, and also if you increased your emphasis on red zone this this off season. Yeah, probably thirty percent of the game is spent um, in the red zone or on third down, and that's a large chunk of it. Uh, we we have to be better offensively on third down. That's about being in third and manageable and eliminating the third and long situations that 
that the number, everybody's numbers aren't very good. So, you know, right now our focus is going to be about, you know, staying on, on track, on schedule offensively to create some of those, you know, third and three, third and two, third and five situations and, and then convert them. Um, and, and then just trying to find ways to get down to the red zone where we've been really good. Are you kind of seeing rewards, I guess, from all that time that you focused on the red zone? Well, I mean, I think so. I mean, we've been, you know, pretty good. I think guys understand where they're supposed to be. And, um, you know, I think Ryan's done a good job of distributing the football. I think we've run it in when we've had opportunities to as well. The second down play at the goal line looked like it dropped both Jeff and uh, Tier, and it caused a, a, a little confusion. What, what was uh, the basis of that and how unusual to drop your two biggest guys maybe in that situation? Well, just trying to pack the paint. Um, you know, just trying to give them a different look and, and not, not being the same thing, uh, probably what you know, not what they were anticipating. Did you come close to picking that? Well, they were close. You know, not as close as David, but they were close. Uh, lobbying for some time at corner now? <clears throat> no, he, he's leading the, league, leading the team in PBUs, though. He, he extended his lead and, and pass breakups. I reminded everybody of that again. Is he misleadingly athletic? For his size, well, he's got good, good power, good burst. Um, you know, he's continuing to to help us and impact the game and and play strong against the run and and try to get a push and you know had a you know got a big holding call uh, the other day. Um, so, you know, I think he's a very improved player for us. Probably one of our most improved players, and um, you know that's a testament, to obviously, Tier and and the defensive staff. Raiden's do stepping in for. Nine yeah, I thought today. that uh, you know Dylan had some some good plays. I thought you know um, going against a very good front, interior rushers and active linebackers, and you know thought that he went in there and um, yeah played well enough for us to win. Obviously, David made an incredible play at the end, but it seemed like he was all, all over. over the field yesterday. Yeah. How good was he, and how important has he been when you've been shuffling other linebackers around? Just I, you can't say enough about his competitive spirit. Um, I mean, he's not the biggest linebacker, um, but he plays with relentless effort, great instincts. Um, you know, just love being around him every day. You know, just the type of person that he is, and, and how hard he plays, and how important it is to him. You know, this I know that this football team means a lot, and you know, he means a lot to us. Almost jumped around. I think on the very first drive. I mean, was is that just been something you guys have been specifically working with him, making that type of play? What's that? When David jumped the route in Indiana. Oh yeah, side. yeah. I mean, just you know, he's just trying to, you know, he's an instinctive player. You know, he sees the ball and he goes and gets it. And sometimes he's in the right place, and sometimes he's not. And we have to have to live with that. Um, but he he plays very very aggressive and downhill on the runs and. You know, he is a, you know, sometimes, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. You jump it and, and they throw it there. And then the other time, you know, you jump it and they, they throw it backside like Wentz did uh, yesterday. So he came back and he, he made the right play at the end. It didn't seem like Daly had a lot of help. What, what were you doing philosophically with him and how did you think he held up? Um, well, I, I mean, I would probably disagree in that statement. We've tried to protect those guys and, um, you know, whether we're, we're chipping for him or, you know, got a tight end over there. But again, you can't, you know, you can't chip for everybody. And uh, we're, we're trying to, to do the best that we can to protect the quarterback. Um, you know, I thought that there was, I thought he settled down. I, I thought Dennis really settled down. Uh, I don't think that any of us offensively started out very well. And, um, you know, I think that we were able to, you know, get Derek going a little bit. You know, we were able to get into the drive. You know, made a made a great play on the screen, uh, came back and followed it up with Dontrell. Um, and unfortunately, some of those runs that we hit, you know, they they, they called us for a penalty uh, for whatever reason. And I'm not sure what they saw, but that's what they saw. So uh, it was good to see Dennis settle down. Uh, but you know, we'll have to be better collectively to, to help a quarterback not get hit as many times as he did. How much optimism do you have with just some of these guys? Um, that have been a little banged up coming back after this bye week, or will it be a little bit yeah, longer? I mean, hopeful. You know, I mean, hopeful, but we'll have to see. We haven't been out and practiced, and 
you know, we'd love to have them all back. You know, so when we get them back, we get them back. Is there a chance that some of the guys who've been on IR since the start, like Bolden or Racy, might uh, might be closer to coming back? Uh, there's a chance. I don't know what percentage, but they can come back. But I just don't know if they will or not. And I guess the guys that are that are banged up will stay here during the bye, just continue to rehab and uh, and and try to get themselves ready. Is that that their plan for the bye? Yeah, that's their plan. Their plan is they uh, they have a responsibility to the football team that uh, when they can't perform and do their job, that they they stay here and get treatment. Yeah, would, uh, I don't think they're going to have much of a vacation outside of. 460 great circle. You have been uh, leaning on Josh a couple with a couple call ups. I know, I know that would have been his last call up. You, you went uh, with Fitz in, instead and, and didn't wind up targeting him. What, what was kind of the basis for, for that choice? No, just a decision. I mean, we gave Josh a, an opportunity um, a couple weeks ago, give, give Des one, and, and we'll see where it goes after this bye week. How did Kalu do uh, filling in for Hooker? I mean, okay. I mean, you know, again, this did okay. You know, just making sure that everybody's on the same page and, you know, doing a job. And, and you know, but I thought that there were, he had some good plays and you know, a couple of plays I thought he could have made, and I'm sure he thought so as well. Can you talk about the hidden yards in, in the game? How smooth has the transition to Stonehouse been and how good has he been for you? Through well, I thought that yesterday we expect more. You know, we really do. I think that uh, some guys are covering – you know, really well. You know, we get three tackles from from a tight end. Um, you know, I think um, he can kick it better. I thought our kickoff coverage uh, did what we asked him to do, which which was go down there with some speed. And you know, they were excited about covering kicks. But you know, Stoney has had a you know up to this point of some some really really great kicks, and I don't think yesterday was his best day. Admittedly, he'll tell you the same thing. So. Um, we just got to get some more hang time on them and give them guys opportunity to go down there and make plays. Last touchdown drive, Mike. The the I think it's third and goal. Um, the delay game. Did you did you have an opportunity to call time out there? Or uh, he, I just uh, thought Ryan was snapping the ball. I went around, turned around, told Hawk like, "Hey, we're gonna go for three. You know, we'll kick a field goal." If, and then, you know, Ryan didn't like what he saw, and we, you know, we'll just you know have to make sure we adjust and. And make sure that we're all on the same page. That Ryan doesn't think I'm calling a timeout when I'm talking to um, to the special teams coordinator about the plan. How much of this week for you is about self scout and look at what you did the first time? Well, I think it always is. I mean, I think we're always trying to conscious of, of what we're we're doing well and how we can continue to do it well. Um, but also, you know, who who can continue to help us? You know, who who should play more? Who's earned the right to play more? Um, you know, maybe who should play less? So. Those are decisions that we have to make. When it comes to getting a head start, too, just because you just played the Colts here in the last two weeks, how beneficial is that for you guys? Is yeah, we've had a couple of these yeah. unusually quick turnaround games with division opponents. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll have, you know, they may have some personnel things that have changed. We'll have some things that will change. But, you know, the core of who they are, you know, won't change and, and how they want to be physical. And, you know, I'm sure some plays will come up again both games that were the same. Um, we'll just have to see um, what it looks like when we get into the game and not be able to predict, hey, this is how it's going to go. They could you know, do some things differently, and we may have some things that are different as well. You talked about chip help, uh, and you've kind of been very complimentary of Hassan and his ability as a blocker and pass pro. He only had two snaps, but is that something that could potentially be something that you look for going forward, is getting him more involved uh, as a way of protecting some of those guys and improving protection? Yeah, I could. You clearly had a plan for Sam O. Uh, did he take what he does on the practice field to the game? Yeah, I mean, he was close to a punt. You know, I think we were close to a couple punts. You know, Sam came through there on the first one. Uh, Lonnie came through. I thought that was a good plan. To, you know, they, they have a good punter, and, you know, our ability to pressure him probably forced him into some of his um, not best punts. And, um, you know, we just had a few, you know, hit the ground, which – you know, you'd like to make sure that we're going up there and catching all our punts. Several guys said yesterday in the locker room that's good to win, obviously, but there's still way more for this mm -hmm. team to do. A lot of, is it encouraging that you can win three in a row knowing that your best football is still definitely out in front of us? I hope it's still in front of us. I do. I, I'm, I'm confident that it is. Um, 
you know, it's just, you know, it's hard. They bust a run and then it could call back for, you know, a block in the back or whatever they, you know, they call, you know, or Derek's close to squirting through on, on a run and, and gets tripped up there by the corner, which, you know, is still a great run. But, you know, we've seen him, you know, break through there and, and, and really make some magic happen. And um, defensively, it's like just continue to do what we're doing, but limit some of the X plays if we can do that. You know, a lot of three and outs. You know, doing a great job of stopping the run. You know, lately, you know I mean, we obviously had the the opening week. You know, mistakes in the run game, but other than that, I think we've really played the run pretty aggressive and pretty physical and pretty sound. So, uh, special teams looks like it's it's trending in the right direction. Didn't get an opportunity to have any kickoff returns um, or any real punt returns, but I thought our coverage units were. We're good, and they're working off each other. So there's a lot of things to improve. Mike, last year, you and your staff, this team, survived so many injuries. Is there a danger of thinking, well, we did it last year, we'll be able to keep doing that this year? Or is it just keep your head down and keep working? Yeah, I don't think we ever think, like, or just because we did something last year or last week that, you know, we're just going to roll it out there and be able to survive. It's, that's never been our attitude here. Um, every week is a huge challenge in this league. Games are close, always very competitive. Um, so a very thin margin for error of winning. And you know we'll try to do everything that we can each and every week to, to be prepared and then adjust to, with the way things are going. Kevin Byard has said that um, you know through the tough times, there's never any finger pointing or anything like that. How proud are you of that locker room to where you don't have that situation, unlike some other team? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I try not to focus on you know what other teams are doing. I focus on really what we're doing. But I am extremely proud to always coach these guys. And you know, if we're going to share in the success, you know, we're going to have to share in in maybe the the times that aren't so good. You know, to help everybody through. And you know, that that starts with me. That makes sure that you know, it, you know we're all accountable for what we're doing, and that uh, we're getting them the information that they need and to to survive and. You know, really just that's the that's the culture that we talked about is making sure that, you know, no matter what comes up, it doesn't waver. Your belief doesn't waver and the things that you know are important don't waver. What have you seen from him being able to play week in and week out? I'm sure has helped him get in a groove. Is he progressing as you thought he would? Yeah, he is. And, uh, you know, every game I, I feel like he takes a step somewhere which is important. And, um, you know, he's, he's played a lot of football for us this year, and we're counting on him uh, to help us and continuing to trust him, and he's doing some really good things. What's maybe next for him? He's got a quarterback four times. He, he, he had a deflection yesterday on four down. What is the thing that he needs to continue to do to, to get better? Yeah, find a way to, to be and continue to find ways to be impactful in, in all plays. You know, sacks are great, and we always talk about sacks, and it's a big stat in this league. But, you know, it's the, the little things. How can we be impactful in the run game? How can we be impactful? Maybe a play going away. You know, those are the things I'm looking for. How can we be impactful on fourth and one, or maybe it's a run and not a pass? So those are the things that I'm, I'm harping to him and the things I'm excited to see. How do you keep Bud from maybe getting frustrated? I know we should try to play a couple of times and just haven't been able to, to finish for one reason or another. What's his attitude like? Are you, I know you're hoping he's got his. Yeah, it's just it's about focusing on the process, you know, not looking behind you, not looking in front and just focus on what the task at hand is. And the task right now for him is just to get healthy. And so dominating that day by day and um, making sure he progresses and he's doing everything he can to get back. And he is. He is. He, he'll, when he comes back, he'll be ready to go. Sorry if you talked about him. How, how good's Rashad's growth curve? Yeah, I'm pleased with the way he's progressing. And um, just like I was talking, to, he just needs to now continue to focus on the little things and the ways he can help every play. Um, what we ask him to do, whether it's set the edge, impact the play that's maybe not a pass. You know, we talk about sacks in this league. It's a big, it's a big stat and a big number that people talk about, but it's the other things I want to see him uh, focus on and continue to improve with. When you talk about what your guys do on the outside, how much has it changed when you have guys inside as disruptive as Simmons and Audrey have been this year? Yeah, it, uh, like the biggest thing about pass rush is they, they work together. So when you have guys that are disruptive like those guys, it opens it up for the edges. When you guys, when you have guys that are disruptive on the edges, it helps the guys inside. So it is a, uh, it's a commonality of everyone working together and kind of being in the same page and then rushing together, knowing who you're next to you, knowing who's across from you, and um, those guys have gelled really well. 
at home, being a husband, you know, it's life. There's always something that we can improve as human beings on it. And when we come to athletics and sports, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun coaching a person who, again, has had as, as much individual success as he's had throughout his life to find little things that he can find uh, and we can talk about it and figure out ways to work or, and I even like it, uh, Braves calls it professional initiative. Sometimes I got in my mind what I want to work on and he'll come up and say, no, 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 I want to work on this today. And, you know, I don't have all the answers as a coach. I, you know, my job is to figure out what's going to make them better and if they certainly find something that they think they can improve on, well, he's the one out there, so why not listen to him at times and do what he needs to do to make him feel confident in, in what he's doing. How great has it been to see Dontrell Hilliard just get involved in this offense, you know, just the, the way that he can be shifty and quick and, and also, you know, involved in that pass catching game. It's awesome. You know, a year ago at this time, Dontrell was at home hoping and wishing that someone would give him an opportunity. Uh, and, you know, credit to John and Braves and their staff of, of finding him. And then he's just done a great job of coming in doing whatever we've asked of him and he's kind of carved out a role for himself and he's taking full advantage of each opportunity he gets and and it's what is really unique is to see how he and this group have all kind of come together and they pull for each other because again a year ago at this time I mean he spent one year or oh, excuse me one week in a room with Derek he, we signed him last year the, the week of the Colts game the second Colts game in October and Derek was there and then all of a sudden Derek was gone and it's a whole new group of guys. So he's done a, a great job of just this group of coming together and pulling for each other and wanting the best for each other. So he's been a pleasant guy to have in the room. He's, he's an awesome person. You know, like I talk about Derek, Dontrell's an awesome guy. And they help each other and it's been fun watching them jail. It was, it was a heck of a play, you know what I mean? Because there are a lot of things involved with that play in terms of being able to see it, being able to have the body control, and, and then be able to get your hands in the right place to make the play. Uh, there was a lot of good things that showed up in that one particular uh, play. Nick and Robert had about 80 to 90% of the snaps yesterday. Is that Was that by design going in, or is that just kind of how things worked? No, uh, we, 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 we try and spread the wealth, if you will. Uh, but in, that particular, in this particular game, it's just kind of how it played out, you know, really. I uh, played out with some of the personnel groupings and all those other things. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I, I came in here kind of late though, but just talking about NW, NWI and just that that play. Oh, you is that know, what he is now? NWI. NWI? That's, it, it's easier it's for us to pronounce the last gotcha, day. Gotcha. And just how it, how fun is that for you as a coach to see a play like that and and a pretty pretty hard one how he had to turn around too. Um, I think for me it was just how pivotal it was yeah. pivotal it was in that point in the game. Um, he's a, he's been a guy that has been consistent for us all year long, and to see him be able to come up with that play is, is good because you know he's a guy who, who, who puts some work in. Um, we're competing, we're battling. Um, that's the one thing we stress with the defense. No matter what happens, we keep fighting and just keep playing. And um, guys play the next play, but the one thing we just got to clean up is the you know explosive plays in the deep ball getting thrown over our head. I know Caleb hadn't played a whole lot mm -hmm. of football, and, and sometimes it shows, and, and I know there are other things he does and mm -hmm. that I'm sure you like. How do you keep him uh, on, on, the, on a steady path, and how do you kind of think your family things five in? Um, you just got to keep working. You know, you come out here every day. You, you come, learn from your mistakes, and come in practice and correct them, and hopefully when we get in the game, you know, what happens in practice translates to the game. And it's not just with him, but with everybody. You know, it's just too many big plays being. Um, you can't live like that as a defense. So we got to clean that up. Is that as hard a position as, as any to try to to learn on the on the fly, learning game? I guess if you will, because one mistake can be so significant. Well, it's an important position on the field because we're the back line of the defense. So when we're giving up, you know, mistakes on us, it's going to lead to an explosive play. Where if, you know, if you're the front, you got the linebackers to cover. We can cover the linebackers, but. On us in the back end, we miss a tackle, whether it's a run or if the ball's being thrown, you know, we're the last line of defense. And that's that's part of, you know, playing DB in the NFL. And we got to be, you know, we got to own that. And we got to be better at that because we got to keep the ball in front of us and make teams go the long hard way. Are there some lessons for, for him in, in particular that, that are just, I mean, I'm sure you've gone over some, mm -hmm. some of the things at the same time, but are some of the things just not quite getting through or, or just what, what, what do you think? Well, it's just, you just got to continue to work and continue to better, get better and stress what you know what we're talking about in the meeting rooms on the practice field about just keeping the ball in front of us, playing with our technique and just understand what we need to get done. And the main thing is 
not giving up the explosive plays. And this is not just one person. This is everybody in the back end that we just have to be better. I guess Mike reminded today that Pierre, I guess, leads the team in PBUs. Does he remind, does he remind guys in the room of that? Or how- oh, trust me, he does. <laughs> he can't stop talking about it. But um, he's really doing a good job of of doing what we what we preach and work on as far as getting in the throwing lanes and getting his hands up if you can't get a sack. And he's also doing a good job of pressuring the quarterback. So, I mean, he, he's playing really good right now. He does a lot of dirty work that sometimes doesn't get noticed. The last couple of weeks, he's, he's starting to get noticed. You have to balance because after you play yesterday, is, is he enjoying that part of it a little bit? Uh, you know what? I think he's having confidence. I think coaches have confidence in him, and uh, his teammates have confidence in him. So he's doing a lot of good things. And again, the, and you mentioned it, the things that I'm most proud of uh, for him don't show up in the stats of how he's taking up these doubles and and doing a good job of letting um, these linebackers run free to make make tackles. So I mean we've played really good in the run game the last few weeks and and he's a big part of it. Traits that uh, you don't teach that. That's just who he is, and he's done that since he's been here. He's done it for the last you know four years. How so remarkable is him it? go out there, you know, like on the sideline and everything? Because one thing you said, there's an undying belief in everyone. How have you seen him go out there and really like fuel that belief that that you guys in the offense have? Yeah, he's always had it. You know, he 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 goes in each game the same way, the same mindset. He's routine based. He prepares each week um, and makes sure that um, the communication is there throughout the week with his teammates. And he goes out and performs it. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate his consistency. How remarkable is it that with all the injuries this team has had, that he's been able to answer the bell and been able to make every start in the last three years? That's a credit to him. You know, he, he, you know the way he takes care of himself, um, his diligence, his routine, same guy every day approach, uh, his competitive nature, uh, and his overall toughness and courage, you know, are things that – are really cool traits that Ryan has. Those are innate traits that he has. Are, was there ever been a time when he got hit and you thought he wasn't going to get up? Um, you know, you don't want to ever get used to seeing your quarterback pick himself up. Um, but you, you know, he, he tends to get up. Thank goodness. And uh, it's been a lot of starts here, a lot of consistency there at, at that position, as in regards to that. So that's all been positive. What have you seen from Dylan as as guard as a, as a post attack? How's he made the transition? You well, I just history? yeah, I mean that's a good question. I think he's um, he's a big body and um, and I think he's getting better at using his hands and staying in front of people in pass pro, which I think with less space inside is to his advantage. Um, but he's a gamer. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter who he's playing or when you tell him he's got to play. He goes just like he did versus the Niners last year. How much help were you given uh, Dennis yesterday with the quality people that were coming at him? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's it's so hard because there's so many things that go into that. I don't, I think we, and starting with Todd and obviously Braves, Todd Downing does, does a better job than anywhere I've been in giving our tackles help um, with chips and bump and, uh, you know, what we call chips and bangs and stuff like that. And then there's times where from a, you know, it's impossible to do it every time. So do I think he was given help? Absolutely. I just don't think we did a good job protecting. Um, but he was given opportunities to get help and just like we were at right tackle and stuff like that. And we just didn't quite do a good job yesterday. Hey, you see the snaps piled up for Nicholas Petit. How, how do you feel he's coming along as far as the progress that he's making? Yeah, I think yesterday he showed improvement at tackle in protection. I thought he used his hands better. I thought he was rerouting the rush better. And that's something we really focused on last week, and I thought that showed up. I was proud of him from that standpoint. Um, you know, with, with all rookies, it still comes down to consistency and being a pro, as we can all imagine. I've never obviously played it, but just watching these guys and coaching them was playing at that really high level on a consistent basis. And I think he takes strides every game. How about Daly on the other side? Yeah, he's um he you know obviously you know he's done a nice job for us coming in with Taylor going down and um, yesterday was a tough day for him. I expect him to bounce back, but um, you know he got off to a slow start and I think it's just kind of piled up on him a little bit. But he's got a big challenge. This will be a great time to have a bye week and figure out how to get back on track and and continue to improve.